And you can't forget the full Well, you get a window because <laughs> you really don't have enough angle here to get the full length of it. What would you recommend? Well, I mean, basically you need you need to get a, a house window. Honestly, what street corner would you recommend? Well, just any any of the houses. See it sort of bends in slightly there. One of the ones at this end would probably be good because it's going to go all the way up. Plus, you can see the car side of the back. Okay,
Absolutely not.
It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> hold on, hold your horses. She's buzzing to be here. So, to follow Leslie, we have our first of three members of the Scottish Government. It uh, shows a real coherence, I think, between the movement and the Scottish Government. We have Jamie Hepburn, MSP. <laughs> Their support is so important in gaining our independence. So please make some noise for Europe and Scotland. <laughs> Iona Fife. We have Hamza Youssef, the first minister of Scotland here at his first ever independence. And if you are ready, let's bring on Leslie Reddy! Yeah. Oh, I think I'm on now. Hello, Edinburgh! Hello, Weechies! Hello, Irish people! Welsh people! 
And there's Grant Sharps at the back. Oh, come on now, he's had the same job for two days running. He must be bored. But above all, hello, yesers. You know, it feels like saying it's good to be back, but we never went away. The astonishing thing is that 50% of Scots, despite everything, are as solid as that rock face that we walked past that sits beneath Edinburgh Castle. We're solid, and that is such a special thing. Now, the reason that I'm here today is to try to say, yeah, independence is European. Now, this may be a wee, you know, there's a wee bit of discussion. Should it be the EU? Should it be EFTA? Let's park that. There should be a vote. I'm, I'm for the EU, but I'm more for voting because that's what we have not had in our country, the chance to express our view. So there's one thing. There will be people here talking right that Brexit's been a disaster, that we've left the world's largest trading union that's seven times larger in population than Britain. That's true. I'm far more interested in the other things about Europe, the society, the politics, the outlook, because we are European. <laughs> Example... Europe is seven times also more fair in its voting than Britain. There is no member of the EU using the utterly discredited first past the post. Oh, right, the country in Europe other than Britain is Belarus. Every other part of Europe embraced proportionality to be fair more than a hundred years ago. That's who we are. If you look also uh, at the kind of uh, view there is about public services, there is no other country in the world, actually, the developed world, that handed over its most precious asset, which is the water that we drink, that we keep those precious assets in public ownership because they're too special to be handed to the private sector. That's European. But irony is that the, that the privatized water of England is mostly three quarters owned by foreign companies, most of whom are the state companies of, of governments in Europe. So, you know, we have an outlook that is already sharing the outlook of Europe. Most countries in Europe are not monarchies, they are republics. So, we come to this question of whether it's the EU or EFTA. I want us to just have this outlook and keep it really close to us. Where we get inspiration from will be our European colleagues. They've been it, they've, they've seen it, they've got independence, particularly the Nordic countries, the most small, successful countries on earth, and they're ready to... That's what we need. So the future, the future is not in the south of this country or very possibly the south of this planet. The future is in the north. The future is for wet, windy countries. Hello? There is independence and being European once again in, in every aspect of our governance. So here's to independence. Thank you. Again for... Loretta! Hey. If you haven't got it already, Leslie's new book, uh, Thrive, The Freedom to Flourish, is out now. Now, guys, honestly, look about you. Look at these numbers. It goes all the way back. But there are, there are, of course, 
There's folk that can't be with us today for all sorts of good reasons. And we asked them to share a couple of messages they'd like you to hear. So we hear Lynn Hamilton from South Lanarkshire. She can't make it because she's going through cancer treatment. But she says, I would love to tell my fellow marchers how proud I am of them. And she says, tack loads of photos, all right? I'm seeing you doing the back saying you can't hear me. Is that loud enough now? Okay, I'll speak at this volume. And I've got another one for Morag Sterling. She's struggling. Faye Sterling! Good stuff. She's struggling health-wise. She'd love to be here. And she sends big hugs to Abdi, especially those that struggled but still made it today. Let's hear it for Morag. The Sharps from Peoples, they were formerly no voters who have converted to yes. Yeah. And we've got Rob McDowell from Glasgow. He's unwell today, but he says, today is a momentous step towards us becoming the independent nation we're meant to be. Lovely. Any, any, any Glaswegians here at all? Brilliant. Shall we get on to our next speaker? Our next speaker is the first representative of our government. Please make some noise for Jamie Hepburn, MSP, the Minister for Independence. Well, thank you very much for that introduction, Kelly. Can I begin uh, by thanking Believe in Scotland and Yes for EU for putting on this wonderful event today to demonstrate the vibrancy, the strength, the diversity of our wonderful movement. I look at, be, at, be, at you all, I have to say you're looking wonderful, but I see people of some parties and none. I see the young, the old, I see mothers, fathers, children. I see people from the length and breadth of Scotland. That is our movement. It's important we gather today. Days like this matter because it serves to remind those who need reminding that we are still here. We're not going away. We're going to keep campaigning. We're going to make the case. We're going to be in every city, every town, every village, every hamlet, every community, every street, doorstep by doorstep making the case for independence until we win. Now, some of you may have noticed my appointment as the Minister for Independence hasn't gone down well with a few folk. Lord George Fawkes has been in the Lord's begging the Tory government to see me out of post. Governor General Alistair Jack has been telling the civil servants they shouldn't be working with me. Friends, we have the spectacle of an unelected Lord and a member of Parliament whose party hasn't won an election in Scotland for 70 years telling us that our democratically elected government and our pro-independence majority Parliament has no right to campaign for independence, I can tell you, we will continue to campaign for independence. And make no mistake, we've never needed independence more now than ever in the past. People out there are finding it tough. There's a cost of living crisis. Now, of course, that's happening. Well, we have a UK government put in place its pernicious welfare reform agenda, harming the most vulnerable in our society. We have a Brexit that we didn't vote for here in Scotland that's damaging our economy and diminishes us on the international stage. We have the disaster zone of that mini-budget by Messrs Truss and Quarteng 
Let's put interest rates through the roof and making people feel uh, the pain. We don't just have a cost of living crisis here in Scotland. We have a cost of Westminster crisis here in Scotland. If we were independent, we would not be feeling that pain. We can make our own decisions, make our own choices, choose our own future. So I have a request of you. Let's take the energy that we feel from today. Let's galvanize ourselves. Let's get out there. Let's take that message out. Speak to your friends, your neighbors, your family. Speak to those yet to be convinced. Don't think of people as no voters. They are yet to be convinced. Make the case. Persuade. We can win. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks very much to Jamie Hepburn, Minister for Independence there. So I think you'll agree we've got off to a great start with the speeches, but how about some music? With us today, we have Dr. Linda Jackson and Fraser John Lindsay. Oh, come on! Hi! What a beautiful sight. Beauty is within grasp. Hear the highlands call The last smile is upon us I'll carry you if you fall I know the armor's heavy now I know the heart is tired It's beautiful, so go roaming The wild mountainside Snow is falling high over out of clear blue sky Crow is flying high over You and I were going to wander High up where the air is clear Wild horses ride It's beautiful, so go roaming The wild mountainside Wild and free There's only a mile to go Wild and free We're all There's only a mile to go So beauty is within grasp Hear the highlands call The last smile is upon us I'll carry you if you fall I know the armor's heavy now I know the heart is tired But it's beautiful, so go roaming The wild mountainside It's beautiful, so go roaming The wild mountainside Fraser Lindsay on guitar, thank you very much. 
So sometimes I work in blues music, and why would people from Scotland sing the blues? Yeah, 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 but that's short term, that's short lived. Change is coming, just look at you. So, this is a song of a recent album I did called The Sirens, and it's a song I wrote for Scotland. So, you don't know it, but I hope you enjoy it, and it's a bit of blues. This is called The Cool Breeze. Shake your shimmy. We've got the trees, we've got the cool, cool breeze. We've got the rivers, we cool, cool breeze. We've got the rivers, we've got the trees, we've got the cool, warm breeze. So let's do it together. Hey, do something if you please. If there's a lot, if there's a lot, well, calm down, yeah. If there's a savior, is there a savior? Well, calm round. But I'm not so sure about all that. I think this crowd will fix this town. Coming out of the rain, I'm saying it once again to you. Yeah. Coming out of that pain, I'm saying it over and over again. You just need to look around. We've got feet on solid ground. So do something for Scotland. We've got the cool night breeze. We've got the rivers. We've got the trees. We've got the cool, yeah, yeah, warm breeze. So let's do it together. Do something if you please. Fraser Lindsay on guitar, thank you very much. You look beautiful today. Thank you. Yeah, for Linda Jackson. We are here and doing the back. That you're struggling to hear a wee bit, we'll be as loud as we can. Can you hear us now? Yeah. I can, you can. <laughs> <laughs> can you just hear us doing the back? Yeah. Brilliant. And if you are standing on the street furniture, think about the folk behind you and make sure they can still get a view. Now, on to our next speaker. We have our second representative of the Scottish Government. It's Lorna Slater, MSP. Oh, did the Greens make it? Are the Greens here? Woo! We had a moment in 2014. I wasn't involved in politics in 2014, never had been. 
but I was so inspired, so inspired by all of you, by your work, by your vision, that the day after that referendum, I said to myself, we've missed an opportunity. We've missed a chance to build to build some, build a new country. And I said to myself, opportunity, go by again. So I got involved. I joined a political party. Maybe, maybe you got inspired. And here we are now with a pro-independence government, a pro government. Because we've got a vision for building a better future, a fairer and greener Scotland. But every day, every day in my work, when I say, how can we make this fairer? How can we make sure more people get living wages? How can we make sure we do more for the climate? I'm told we can't do that. It's not devolved. Over and over again, that is not devolved. We don't have the powers to do that. And that's before Westminster start rolling back, start pushing back on the powers that this Scottish Parliament have, disrespecting this Scottish Parliament. back on the work we are doing for equalities and for our environment, things we believe in deeply that we know matter to the people of Scotland. We don't have to be the Scotland of Downing Street. We can be the Scotland of Kenmere Street. Each other, no matter where they're from where we welcome people from around the world who make their home in Scotland. <laughs> Do that with the powers of an independent country. We can only remove the hospital home office. We can only rejoin as an independent country. So that has to be our first step. So thank you everyone for for making it so clear that you support a vision for a better Scotland, a fairer, greener Scotland. Yeah. Let's keep working together keep inspiring people to get involved, and we can. We can do better. We can build a new Scotland. We can become an independent country. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks so much to Lorna and Jamie for being with us and sharing those inspiring words. I'd love just to share a couple more words for folk that can't be here. Fiona and the Hale Fisher family, their son Jonathan is still needing shielded, so the family can't march, but they send their love. Let's hear it for the Fishers. And here, I've got one to embarrass a man who is here today, Andy Atkinson for Bells Hill. Is he about? Somewhere he's taking a massive beamer. Andy Atkinson supported Indy since he was a bairn, and it's his 79th birthday today. Good on you, Andy. We've also got Anne Smith. Jura. She says she's gutted she can't be here due to post-op recovery, but she truly hopes that this is a new beginning for independence. <laughs> Next up. This group has 15 teams all across Europe making the case for Scotland's contribution in the European Union. Please welcome Claude.
Hello, everybody. I'm uh, European with a French accent. Uh, OK. Bonjour, chers amis. Good day, Scottish friends. I'm very, very happy to be with you here. First of all, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for all the organizers for inviting me here. I'm here as a representative of uh, Scotland in Europe, uh, Europe for Scotland, <laughs> to speak uh, on behalf of our European network. My name is Claude, and uh, I'm a retired scientist. And, uh, with, uh, and yesterday, I just arrived in Scotland for the very first time. And it's, it's, a, it's a really sunny day, a sunny country. Thank you. So today, I want to, to speak about uh, two things. Uh, the first, very quickly, to, to explain uh, what we do at uh, Europe for Scotland, and second, to tell you that uh, Europeans love you. They believe in you and want you back. Thanks. Europe for Scotland is a pan-European and not-profit campaign composed of European citizens volunteering all across Europe. We set up it after the Brexit uh, to express our solidarity with you, our Scottish friends, and uh, to tell you if you want to join the EU as an independent country, we would love to welcome you back again. So, in spring 2021, we sent an... Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> In spring 2021, we sent an open letter to the European politicians, asking them to show support to Scotland ahead of a new independent referendum. We want the EU to speak out and say clearly to all Scots that they have friends in Europe and they have a future in Europe. We want this to be super clear for you when the time comes, and it will come for you, for you to choose again. Mes amis, of course, we will fully respect you and support your choice, whether you want to stay in the UK or to become again what you were once before, a free, independent Scotland. And uh, if you choose independence in Europe, I'm here to remind you you will not be alone. Your friends in Europe are by your side. We believe in you and we stand with you. So, I told you I was a scientist. You may want, like me, proof that we stand with you. Here is it is. Um, many famous Europeans have signed our open letter among them, sorry, <laughs> among, <laughs> among them, leading scientists and scholars, artists and writers, as well as uh, famous Scots. Uh, more than 15,000 uh, Europeans have gone to europescotland.com to add their names to our open letter and make the, their voice uh, heard. Here is more proof. In 2022, Europe Scotland called for volunteers to set up a network of ambassadors with representatives in more than 10 European countries. In France, through Franco-Scottish events, we connect with all who support Scotland and we work to broaden that support. 
Okay, okay, uh, all right, you say. But Tom is uh, running out, and I haven't mentioned my second point. Yes, uh, okay, you are right. Well, remember November uh, 23rd of last year, when the Supreme Court ruled that Scotland must accept Westminster authority over its democracy. We, we know you march here in Edinburgh. It was a wet, wintry night. We felt the cold wind in the, uh, of that decision with you as we stood in Paris, in Berlin, in Rome, in Dublin, in Dublin and in Brussels. We, we were in Europe with you because we stand with you and we want you back. We want you back because in 1295, long before the Treaty of, you, of the Union, you, Free Scotland, were a builder of Europe with the old alliance. You have to know that France celebrates your contribution to this day. Remember, we remember and we want you back. We want you back because your contribution, the Enlightenment, helped to define Europe's ideals today. You can have a, see, uh, a look on our film at the Art of Europe with Billy Kay on Europe for Scotland YouTube channel, uh, channel, a uh, website. Sorry. It's Sam. Ah, yes, you are right. <laughs> I continue asking. and live, study, walk, and build. Well done. Yeah, yeah, finish. It's got to be, it's got to be. Thank I'm sorry. So Claude, Claude, Claude de Tre, that's his first ever time in Scotland. Saturday here, don't we? Absolutely fantastic, thank you. Now we all know that independence is for every generation, but we cannot get over the line without our young people. So I want you to give the biggest cheer of the day for Believe in Scotland's brand new youth thing. Neve and this is Cameron and Luke. Uh, we're here on behalf of Believe in Scotland, the wonderful people who organised all of this today, uh, to talk to you about an exciting opportunity for young people to get involved for the Campaign for Independence. Believe in Scotland is an organisation that exists to reach out to undecided voters and to help coordinate, fund and support the needs of the grassroots yes movement on a local and national level. We're party neutral, so we're choosing to focus on independence as a whole and come together to deliver the future that every single one of us deserves. in and becoming eligible to vote and that's a massive massive group of possibly undecided people that we can reach that's why we're setting up a youth wing of believe in scotland which is calling for individuals aged 16 to 26 to come and join us bis youth is about taking the campaign for scotland's independence to young people independence is about creating a better scotland and a better future for everyone but it's young people who will feel the effects of independence the most. All too often, political parties, movements and activists forget about the importance of young people in our national debates. Um, young, young people feel disillusioned and as a result fail to turn up at the ballot box and have our voices heard. 
We aim to combat that by reaching out to young people, getting them involved, talking about their issues and how independence can benefit them. If young people were as likely to vote as pensioners, it would change everything. We will be the generation that takes our future into our own hands. The generation that helps Scotland become a fairer, happier, more sustainable and more successful nation through de self-determination. So our mission is to add another dimension to the independence movement. We all know politics is dominated by older people, even though the decisions made here today affects us young people's lives the most. And just look at the disaster that Brexit is as just one big example. Uh, Believe in Scotland Youth wants to bring in a new energy to the campaign. Reach out to and engage young voters on the benefits to them from Scottish independence and have more of an impact on policy making today. And to start with, today we are launching our new social media accounts. You can find us on all major platforms that Believe in Scotland Youth. We're beginning our campaign we're beginning our campaign online the way young people use it, not how older people think we do. <laughs> We're also reaching out to relevant youth organisations across the country, encouraging young people to get involved with all diverse range of views. We're also a way to release our first Believe in Scotland Youth leaflet, targeting issues that matter most to us. Uh, friends, uh, we are an independent generation that can take Scotland's future into our own hands and the ones to build the better, fairer and more sustainable future through self-determination. So I just want to take a minute to thank everyone here for listening to us today and a big thank you to Believe in Scotland for organising all of this and working with us on this amazing project. You know, we hope we are all so excited as we are for the future of campaigning and the hard work has just begun. So if you are interested to get involved, find our social media posts, find our accounts, and e even email us at Believe in Scotland. Uh, thank you, everyone. Believe in Scotland Youth! Sensational. I think you'll all agree that the real jewel in our crown is our cultural heritage in Scotland. So next up, fresh from her US tour, we have award-winning folk singer, Iona Fife. In 2014, I was 16 years old and I voted yes. And I do it a hundred times over. Growing up in rural Aberdeenshire, I saw the huge inequality that the region faced. We have the Aberdeenshire of Balmoral, of royalty, of immense wealth. And then we have the Aberdeenshire where families are choosing between eating and heating. Whilst the UK government are siphoning money to their cronies and letting energy companies off with billions in profit. A brighter, more inclusive and just prosperous future within the heart of Europe. We have lost our ability to have frictionless, visa-free, carne-free travel in Europe. Our people, our creatives, can no longer work, live and experience free movement in the European nations that are on our doorsteps. Now, this is reciprocal. Our European counterparts can no longer come here to share their traditions, their music and their heritage. And we all know what happens when we cease to understand each other. Without our cultural collaboration, we are poorer off. We must continue to engage with your friends and the European member states who support us. They believe the United Kingdom is a laughing stock. We are a nation steeped in culture, in tradition and resilience. And we have long held this belief to self-determination. The time has come for us to take full control of our own affairs. And the time has come for us to take full control of our own affairs and to shape our own future. But this vision for Scotland gings beyond borders. We aspire to rejoin the EU, a union built on unity, cooperation, and shared values. 
Rejoining the EU, Scotland can once again stand proudly alongside our neighbours. We can be part of a community that cherishes diversity and embraces innovation and confronts global challenges like climate change. Brexit forced a choice upon us, but it shouldn't have defined our future. We refuse to be cut off for the world. We refuse to lose the opportunities and benefits that come from EU membership. Independence is not about isolation. It's about empowerment. It's about ensuring that the decisions that impact our lives are made by the people who live, work here, and contribute to our community. It's about reclaiming our voice on the global stage. The road to independence and to EU membership may be challenging, but it is a path worth walking. It's a path fueled by hope, resilience, and the belief that our future is in our hands. Today, we can build that Scotland that stands proudly as a beacon of progress, tolerance, and cooperation within Europe. Let's take this journey together. With our seat at the international table, we can make decisions that truly reflect the values and aspirations of your people. And let me be very clear, sending vulnerable people to Rwanda or housing them on barges is not the aspiration of neither the Scottish people or the Scottish government. And so I will shut up and sing. <laughs> this song was originally written by Woody Guthrie. Years ago, a plane went down in California and that plane was carrying Mexican fruit pickers who wanted to have a better life in America. And when that plane went down, the press said that an American citizen had died and 12 deportees. That's the only way that they were spoke of, deportees. And I noticed that in 2021, when the community of Glasgow came together and successfully protest against the detention and dawn raids of men in Glasgow, It was a successful day, but the way that the press treated them was all too similar to the way that the press treated the men in Mexico. So this one is called Kenmuir, and it's a rewritten Woody Guthrie song. The city is quiet, morning is breaking, the people are making their daily Down in the south side, they've spied a big white van. The government say they're to end a dispute over two men who settled and thrived in this nation, who made it their home and who worked all their lives. Torn from their homes on the holiest day and judged by the press through innocence. The suits down a white hall make justifications for tearing a family apart in the street. You won't have a name when you write the bill. All they will call you will be deportees. Defending their neighbours raided at dawn For eight hours they sat there chanting and singing Your home is in Glasgow, you're where you belong Why should we continue to stay in this union? A union that doesn't treat us with respect We should carve our own path and set our value the people we ought to protect. The suits down in Whitehall make justifications for 
rotate in a family up in the street. You won't have a name when you write the big Very, Sorry, sorry. We just need our first aiders. We need our first aiders for a second to go to an incident just over here. So first aid stewards, please head just down there to the area I'm pointing to now. Down here, sorry, right down the front, just to the right-hand side of the stage. Left hand, as you're looking, if a first aider can make the way down. I can see the first aider's head in there now. Sorry, Abdi, carry on. I will Think of that woman who makes the decisions, who wears her posh suit and who smirks at the press. She thinks taking back control means depressing our people instead of the issues she ought to address. No one is illegal, no matter where you come from, we're still toiling through. Westminster's lies. The system is broken, but we see a way out. It's time now for Scotland to stand up and rise. The suits down in Whitehall make justifications. Retain in a family apart in the street. You won't have a name when you ride the big airplane. All they will call you. Best way we can grow our own nation. How can we move forward if we can agree? And they shouldn't be sad to ride the big airplane. All they will call you will be deportees. Okay, time for one very, very quick song. This song was written in the 70s about the first vote to get this building here and devolution. And in 1998, around the same time I was released, it was released. But in 2014, this was about independence. But now, today, our devolution is under threat at every single turn. So I sing this song about devolution, retaining it, and getting our independence. Drink it 
toast is Scotland yet Whatever yet may be While we still seek to blame our woes And pains on someone Together we can choose for ourselves at last. The choice will be upon us soon to set to destiny. Oh, oh, and I'll drink a toast to Scotland, yes, whatever yet may be. Thank you. Thank you to Iona. Thank you. Just to reassure you, the person, the fainted for the heat, is being seen to by our excellent volunteers, first aiders at the polis. They get plenty of water and they're grand. Let's hear it for the volunteers. So, we've got a very important guest for you now. I don't know about you, but I think it's just amazing to have the highest elected official in Scotland attend in one of these rallies. How far have we come in the last two decades? Please welcome Hamza Yusuf, MSP. Ladies and gentlemen, they say that the sun shines on the righteous. <laughs> My goodness, what a scorcher you've brought. What a beautiful crowd you are. Far beyond the eye. What a beautiful crowd you are. Far beyond the eye can even see. Friends, the opposition who sit in that chamber in Holyrood, they tell me that we are narrow nationalists. Well, I look at this crowd and I see people of all ethnicities and races. I see people who are religious. I see the agnostic and the atheist. I see the highlander and the lowlander. I see those from the cities and those from the islands. I see those who are straight and gay, lesbian, bisexual. I see our trans community. I see them all here. I see our movement. I see our movement in its most beautiful diversity, the beautiful tapestry of our nation. And I'm reminded of the words of my mentor, the late and great Bashir Ahmed who said it doesn't matter where you come from. What matters is where we're going together as a nation. And I can tell you now, I know where we are going together as a nation. We are still going, our destination, as an, as, as an, an independent nation, and of course an independent nation in the very heart of the European Union where we belong. I cannot tell you, friends, what an honor it is standing here on this stage addressing you 
as the first minister of the greatest country on God's green earth. <laughs> and as I was walking down the Royal Mile, visual reminder after visual reminder of how Scotland has contributed to humanity and contributed to the world. Whether it's through fantastic economists and moral philosophers like Adam Smith, great explorers, anti-slave campaigners like David Livingston, whether it's through social justice campaigners like Mary Barber, great scientists like Mary Somerville, whether it's like great poets like the Baird, Rabbi Burns, who taught the world a thing or two about love and romance, maybe a little bit too much, uh, I have to confess. But our glories, our achievements, they're not of some mythical past. They're not of a day that has bygone. We're still contributing to the modern world, still giving to humanity, whether it's through our excellent food and drink, our world-class universities, our renewable technologies, our life sciences, our fintech, our financial services, whether it's through great people like Nobel Prize winning scientist David McMillan, whether it's through phenomenal athletes like Josh Kerr, Ailish McCaughan, and Scotland's warrior Andy Murray, <laughs> whether it's through musicians and artists like Emily Sandy or Calvin Harris, like Lewis Capaldi, comedians like Kevin Bridges, Frankie Boyle, or the big end, ladies and gentlemen. Animals are famous like Dolly the sheep. <laughs> my point is, my friends, the serious point, with an abundance of so much human talent, with so much wealth, with so much resource, don't dare tell me that we are too wee or too poor to be an independent nation. Because the evidence is all around us. Look at those European nations, the size of Scotland, and look how they compare to the UK. Look at Ireland, look at Denmark, look at Austria, look at Sweden. Wealthier than the UK. Higher productivity than the UK. Fewer people in poverty than the UK. And guess what? They're all independent countries. Independence. Independence is not a sideshow. It's not a luxury. It's a fundamental ingredient to each of those countries' successes. And the message that you and I need to take to every single doorstep in the country is pretty simple. If it works for them, and with all of the talent, the resource, the wealth that we have, then why not Scotland? Why not our country? Why not our nation? Friends, we stand here in front of our nation's parliament. Why? We stand here to rededicate ourselves to that cause of independence. And by God, the people of our country need it now more than they've ever needed it before. We believe, we believe in independence because this unequal union has caused so much suffering and so much harm. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the people of this country, they're not suffering from a cost of living crisis. They're suffering from a cost of the union crisis. And they are. And I don't believe for a minute Sir Keir Starmer when he tells me that the Labour Party offer real change. Keeping the two child limit is not real change. Keeping the bedroom tax is not real change. Keeping us chained to a Brexit that is damaging our economy is not real change. Saying that you'll apply the rape clause fairly is not real change. The only fair thing to do with the rape clause is consign it to the dustbin of history where it belongs.
We, we are the ones who offer real change. But it's not enough to point out Westminster's failings. There are many of them, and we shall continue to do that. But it's not enough. We have to inspire people. We have to give them a reason to vote for independence. So let's go out there. Let's chat every door. And let's inspire people. Let's give them a vision. Let's tell them that they can imagine an independent Scotland that doesn't waste billions of pounds on the obscenity of nuclear trident missiles, but spends that money on eradicating poverty. Tell them. Tell them. Imagine an independent nation that doesn't turn away our brothers and sisters who are fleeing persecution and war. Imagine a Scotland where we show compassion to those who are suffering. Imagine a Scotland where we show them compassion, not callousness. Imagine a Scotland where we open our homes and our hearts to them, that we offer them sanctuary. We don't send them on planes to Rwanda. Tell them, imagine a Scotland that has rejoined the European Union, where our young people once again have the opportunities that generations in the past have had, where they'll be able to work and study and travel abroad, live in the European Union. So we'll welcome Europeans to our nation too. Tell them, tell them to imagine that in this world where we see too much darkness too often, that an independent Scotland will stand up as a beacon of light, of social justice, a well-being economy, and show global leadership in issues like climate change. Tell them to imagine a better future that only comes friends with independence. And that is our job. Our job is to inspire people, not just point out the failings of the miserable Westminster government, but to inspire people, give them a reason to vote for, for independence. And if you look for inspiration, look at the past and look at the future. Take inspiration from the giants on whose shoulders we stand on, the brilliant people of our movement, the Neil McCormacks, the Margot McDonalds, the George Leslies, the Winnie Ewings, the Bashir Ahmeds that have gone in the past. But so too, so too look forward. Look at our children. Look at our grandchildren. Look at the Waynes, the Bairns. And say to them that we believe and we will do everything in our, everything that we can, everything that we can in our power to make sure they have a future where they make decisions for themselves and are not burdened with a cruel Westminster government. Because friends, that is the prize. And I want you, I want to end with that imagination, that inspiration. I've stood here in rallies before and I've asked you to imagine that moment when Scotland becomes an independent country. Well, I want you to indulge me again, but not that moment. I want you to think of another moment. I want you to imagine that we are standing here again, gathered not in our thousands, but this time in our millions. The vote has been won. The negotiations with the UK government done. And here we are standing, looking at giant screens that are showing the proceedings of the Scottish Parliament. I'll be in there, but don't worry, there'll be plenty of folk out here. And we imagine that moment when the presiding officer looks at the results of the motion in front of them and says and announces that the Scottish Independence Bill, which will repeal the Act of the Union, has been passed by a majority of that Scottish Parliament. And you take that feeling and you
inspiration. And you make sure, and I will make sure, that we will knock every single door in this beautiful country. We will talk to every single Scot with patience, with persuasion. That is our task here at hand, because remember this, this journey for Scotland to regain her independence was not started by us. We are the latest custodians of that journey, of this cause. But it wasn't started by us. It's a journey that's been going on, not for decades, but for centuries. Ladies and gentlemen, we may not have started the job, but it's our job for the sake of our children, our grandchildren, and those future generations that are yet to be born to get on with it and finish it. And I'll be by your side every single step of the way. Thank you very much, Edinburgh. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? Let's hear it for Hamza! Sorry guys. Hamza Yusuf! In today's operation, most of you will probably know him from Business for Scotland, but he's now with Believe in Scotland. Please welcome Gordon McIntyre Kemp. Thank you very much. Wow, what a fantastic crowd you guys are. We're trying to estimate it. We've talked to the authorities. And 25,000 people marched today. Months ago, the media and the unionist politicians were saying, oh, independence is dead. Goodness, have you guys given them a shock today? Look around. I think it's plain to see the sun is definitely shining on the Scottish independence family right now, right here. Now, Believe in Scotland was formed about three years ago. And job is to provide leaflets and materials, videos, training, and financial support even for independence campaign groups. We have 131 local independence campaign groups and 10 national uh, groups affiliated with us. We're also a fully democratic organization because they have elected a national campaign steering group who meet every month and decide what events we put on, how we spend our budget and what messages we campaign on. What we are is a support mechanism for the grassroots right across Scotland. And the grassroots organizers, the people that do stands and stalls, the people who deliver leaflets, you are my heroes because nobody will move the poles except for the grassroots, yes, uh, family. If you want to join us, go to believeinscotland.org. There's a form on the front page. Fill it in and we'll send you the details of your local yes group. Now, we're partnering today with Yes for EU. Two percent of Scottish people voted to remain in the European Union. Do you know that if there was a referendum tomorrow that 73% of Scots would vote to rejoin? And 90% of no to yes switchers in 2014 want an independent Scotland to rejoin the EU. The reason for that is because Brexit sends a message. It says that Britain is not open for business. It says that Britain doesn't like immigrants. It says that Britain is unfriendly and thinks it's special in the world. It says that Britain is isolationist. It says that Britain is xenophobic. But Scotland is not Britain. And pretty soon, we will not even be part of Britain either. 
So how do we get our independence? Well, we have to campaign. We have to take the energy from events like this, and we have to take it to the doorsteps. We have to take it to the church halls, to the pubs, to the football games, to the bingos, to work. We have to talk to our friends and family and share the vision of a better Scotland. We have to share the vision of a fairer, greener, healthier, happier, more sustainable Scotland. And that's the well-being economic approach. And folks, that also includes the well-being pension of £235 per week, which will lift every pensioner in Scotland out of poverty. <laughs> government after UK government has kept the pensions low. It's the second worst in the developed world, the basic pension. They do that so that middle classes are forced to take out private pensions and boost the city of London. Pensioner poverty is a union policy. Now, you don't want to hear too much from me, so I'm just the organizer. But I want to finish with one quick thing. And that is, in 2014, at the beginning, we were at 27% in the polls. That's the only reason that they agreed to a referendum, because the polls said they would win. The reason they're doing every dirty trick in the book, being anti-democratic and even going to the Supreme Court, is because this time, the polls are telling them they will lose. So please join us. Join any part of the independence family, whether they believe in Scotland affiliated or not. Get out there on the streets, deliver leaflets. Join your local yes group and campaign. Take the positive message we've got of a better Scotland out to Scotland. And whether it's a referendum or possibly more likely next year's general election, we are going to win and we are going to become an independent nation again sooner than they think. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Even Scotland have a stall down here. If you can, they would love you to donate or visit them online. We're almost ready for our closing tune now. So to please welcome Morag from Yes for EU. and I'm from Yes for EU. We joined forces with Believe in Scotland to organise this event and it's just wonderful to see you all here so thank you all for coming from all the corners of Scotland and beyond. It's, it's just fantastic. I just want to say a lot of thank yous before introducing the final uh, musical uh, performances. So thank you uh, first of all to all of you and thank you to all the volunteers, all the stewards and the other volunteers who have done a fantastic job. <laughs> thank you to the speakers. They've been just fabulous speakers. And uh, thank you for lots of different reasons. Um, and in particular, our speakers and the performers from, from Europe and Claude, who came over from Bordeaux especially. To uh, tell us how, how welcome Scotland will be once we're independent in Europe. Uh, thank you to the Believe in Scotland team. Thank you to the City Council, the Parliament, the police, who have all actually been really supportive in helping us get this organised. So I just want to encourage everybody to repeat what other to do what other people have said, which is we are the grassroots movement. It's up to us. We have to get out there. We have to throw everything at it over the next few months to get where we want to be, which is independent and be a normal, democratic, progressive country, a normal nation. Again. <laughs> just going to this is us nearly finished now, except for, of course, the wonderful Sir Alva Pipes and Drums, who are going to come on in a minute. And singing with them will be uh, Iona Fife again. So thank you ever so much. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. And the Sir Alva Pipes and Drums, please come and join us again.
So once you take the logo button, you take the logo button, you take the office. 